In this presentation, we're going to record transactions related to sales receipts in our bank feeds. In other words, we're going to see the deposit within the bank feeds. We're going to record the sales receipts in such a way that we can match them up with the deposits that are going to be happening in the bank feeds. Get ready because we're dropping in with Wave. Here we are in our Get Great Guitars dashboard. We're going to be up and opening up the reports down below on the left here. Our two reports, those being, of course, the financial statement reports, the balance sheet and the income statement, P&L, profit and loss, starting off with the balance sheet. Once open, we're going to duplicate the tab up top by right-clicking on that tab and duplicating it. Then we're going to go back to the tab to the left. We're going to do a similar process for that P&L, that profit and loss, that income statement, opening it up, going up to the tab up top so that we can right click and yes, duplicate it. Then we're going to go back to the balance sheet and we're going to adjust the dates. We'll be, we'll be working in 2019. So therefore, I'm going to change the dates to 2019. Then we're going to be updating that report and scroll on down. And we also want to show the details because I like seeing them the details and then we're going to go back to the income statement once again changing this to 2019 updating that report and then scrolling on down to see the details for there as well so that we see the details then we're going to go back to the first tab we're going to go back on down to the accounting because this is our bank feed transactions we've got one last bank feeder to uh, be working with in our transactions i then we're going to the transactions we're going to be filtering to find it. We'll filter to find that last transaction. I'm going to go to the categories. I'm going to be going to the uncategorized items and apply that filter. And there we have our last item that we need to be dealing with. Now, I'm going to go back to the flow chart and consider this. This is a deposit. And so we're going to go back to our flow chart. We considered the fact in the first month or the idea or the concept or the uh, thought of type of business if we had just a deposit happening in the first month and we just deposited and, and assume it's income then we consider well what, what if we had invoices that we had to invoice and then deposit and we had to connect the deposit out that we just thought of those in the last two uh, presentations and now we want to think about well what if we like have a system where we're making sales within like a store or or and you, can, you can imagine a cash register type of setup and we're getting money like cash and then we got to take that money and, and go to the bank and deposit it like at the end of the day, end of each day. And it's a cash transaction. If that were the case, then all the cash sales that we made are, are going to be are going to be adding up. But they're not going to match the deposit that we make at the end of the night because we're going to group that up and deposit it into uh, into the system at the end of the night. So how can we set up a system like that? How can we gather basically the cash and then group it together so it's deposited into the bank in the same format? Uh, as it should be because if we just deposit the cash every time we get it then we're going to have a whole bunch of deposits in our side in our system and we're going to have to match them all out to to what's on the book side of things so this is a scenario where you might want to use like a clearing account so i'm going to set up another account i'll just use the account they have they gave us the cash on hand account and i'll record our sales here now this could be a similar process you could do with the invoicing where you have the invoice and then maybe you receive multiple different payments for multiple different invoices and again, you want to put them in the bank as one lump sum. You might then put them through a kind of like a clearing account or the cash holding account. So let's see what that would look like. I'm going to go back over here and say, all right, we're going to we're going to imagine going back in time so that we are actually making the sales kind of in the store, like a cash register. You can imagine more of a cash register type, type of thing in our guitar shop. People are coming up and buying stuff and we're selling them and they're, we're selling them like in the store and getting cash for it. Right. And then we're going to take that and go to the bank. All right. So I'm going to be right clicking on the tab up top duplicate it so we have another tab we can be working with then i'm going to go up to the dashboard so we're going to open up the dashboard and actually the best way of thinking about this I, i'm going to set this system up so that we're going to go to the cash on on hand account transactions so i'm going to go down to the accounting once again actually and then i'm going to go to the transactions but within the transactions now i want to be thinking about not all accounts we're, we want to think about and not the checking account but the cash on hand account so here we are in our transactions where it says all accounts up top. I want to select the drop down and I just want to be dealing with the cash on hand. So this is cash and that we haven't hasn't made it to the bank. So if we're like imagining we're making sales during the day, then you may want to record it to something like this account. And then when you, at the end of the day, have the have it transferred over for the deposit. For example, if I say I'm going to have an add income item and we're going to say that we're, we're going to make a sale. So I'm going to just say it's a sale 
and ca cash on hand. I'm going to say the date of it is going to be back in April. So I'm going to say April 2000. I'm going to say like the 4th of April. I, and then April 4th. And then we're going to say uh, it's going to be a deposit. And the amount, let's just say the first one's like 200. The other side, we're going to put to our income account. And that's going to be uh, income sales. I'm going to put it into sales. So then I'm, I'm going to save that trend. Now we could add a customer. We should if we go, but if we're making a lot of sales, we're imagining a lot of sales happening, then maybe we're not tracking the customer. We're just basically making sales, recording them into our system. So I'm going to record that sale. And then I'm going to say, okay, we got another one. So we're going to make another sale. I'm going to say, add another item. And I'm just going to call it a uh, sale. And then it's going to be in the cash on hand. I'm going to bring this back on to April. So we'll bring this back to April once again. And then I went too far. April 4th. And we're going to say that this was uh, $50. Let's just make it $100. $100. It's going to go to, once again, sales. So sales. And so there we have that one. And then I'm going to save that. And then I'm going to save it. It didn't go to sales. What happened here? Sales. Sales. I'm going to pick that account. And then save it. So there we have that. And then I'm going to make one more. I'm going to say uh, income. And I, I want to tie this out to our number over here. That the deposit is the uh, 99645. So I'm going to pull up the trusty calculator. We're going to say it needs to be 99645. And we have two items so far. Those two items being minus the 100 minus the 200. We need another one for 696.45. So I'm going to say, all right, new one uh, category. It's going to be for, I'm going to say sales. <clears throat> and the date's going to be back in April again. So April. Scrolling on back to April, and then uh, there it is, and then the fourth, and then I'm gonna say that this is gonna be six. Uh, I lost my calculator. It was six nine six point four five is the amount, and then we're gonna categorize that to sales. Sales. So there we have that, and it looks good. Let's save that. So there we have that. And so there's our three transactions. So next we're going to say, okay, now we're going to say that these items have cleared uh, the bank. So now we're going to imagine at the end of the day, we would take this to, to, the, to the bank, deposit it into the bank, which results in basically a transfer on the bank side of things. As we see comes through in our bank feeds, we're seeing this 996.45. So what we're going to do now is pull this over or match this out to the transactions that we had in the prior and in, in the prior section. So I'm going to say, open this up because now we're in, uh, I, I'm, I'm looking at just the chase account now, which is going to be that transaction deposit. And we, we want to transfer it from the, the cash on hand to the deposit. Before we do so, let's go to the balance sheet and update this report. So if we update this report, now we have this 99645 on hand. That didn't come from the bank feeds. That's cash that we're kind of holding on to. That increase there. The other side of it went to the revenue account. So if we update, update the item over here, it went into the sales revenue account. So, so now what we want to do is apply out the 996 is, is going to go back down. And we're going to apply it out to this amount that's an uncategorized income. So this one's going to go down to zero. Hopefully that should, that's the plan. And then the other and this one's going to go down to zero. All right, so let's try it out. We're going to go back to the first tab. So I'm looking now at the checking account, not the cash on hand. I'm just looking at the checking account at this point in the first tab. I'm going to go into this item and then this is going to be a transfer. We're basically going to have a transfer here. So if I select, then it's going to be for the, for the 996. If I select the drop down. It's, I'm going to say that this is a uh, transfer from the bank, right? And I'm going to say it's coming from the other side, which is cash on hand. And there's going to be where it's coming from. So this should be a transfer in from that account. Let's go ahead and save that and see what happens with it. So I'm going to save that item. And so now what happens, you might have to refresh your screen to see what happens here. It's, I'm going to, I'm going to adjust this to just be showing as it is the checking account here and not the cash on hand. 
and then I've filtered it just to see the, the content that is currently uncategorized, which is the 99645. So that's what's in the checking account that's not categorized. And then if I go to the second tab, I have the cash on hand where we have the transfer. So if you refresh the screen here, we're going to refresh the screen like so. And then we're looking just at the cash on hand. And so we had the sale, 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 and then, we, and then this transfer was created, of course. So now we need to categorize the transfer and match that out here and match that out on this side. Now to do that, you might use basically a clearing account. So I'm just going to use another clearing account that will basically zero itself out as we as we match this out. So I'm going to I'm going to open up this one. I'm going to say that uh, we have a uh, the deposit here. It's going to go into uncategorized. I'm going to make a new account down below. So I'm going to go all the way down. And I'm going to say this is going to be like a, an asset type of account. So I'm going to say this is an uh, other short term asset. And I'm going to call it a cash clearing account. And so then I'm going to say save. And then we're going to record that there. So I'm going to say save that. And we applied that out. So then if I go to the balance sheet and I update the balance sheet, then it's going to go into the cash clearing account now has that 996 in it on the income statement if i take a look at the income statement and i update the income statement we have removed all income accounts that have been uncategorized so now we've got it here now i'm just going to match that out against uh the the amount on the other side which is going to be here on the cash uh cash on hand so we have this 99645, which isn't applied out. Where is that? The other side of that? It's on the income statement down here in the uncategorized items, uncategorized the 996. So we need to take that out. We're going to match that out against this 996 in the cash clearing account. So I'm going to go back up. And to do that, I'm going to categorize this. Uh, I'm on the second tab now. We want to categorize this one to the same account. So I'm going to say this is going to go to the uh, what's this going to go to drop down this is going to be the cash clearing account that's the one we want categorize that one out and that should complete the transfer and then we would check these all out as having been uh, cleared and deposited right and then i'm going to go back to the to the uh, balance sheet update the balance sheet and we should see it then disappear out of the clearing accounts the clearing account is back to zero and the cash is is what it should be we've matched out those three items to the one deposit by using that clearing account and then if i go back to the income statement and update the income statement that miscellaneous item will then be removed so if i update this then i'm not the miscellaneous the uncategorized item is now removed so that's going to be the process hopefully that makes sense we you set up a clearing account and and then you can and then you put it into the cash the cash on hand account take it out of the cash on hand and group it in the same ways as the deposit's gonna show when it clears through the bank feeds. So that's gonna be it for now. Let's get out of here.